Hi everybody, my name is Jeremy. Welcome to my golf simulator. Uh, you're either here because you're addicted to golf like I am, or you've been following me on racing and you're wondering why all of a sudden you're seeing a golf video. Well, like I said, I'm addicted to golf. Show you what we're working with here. So I wanted to show you what I use for a setup. And uh, the reason I use it is because where we live in northern Minnesota, it is winter for roughly... 13 months out of the year, so um, we need to have a place to golf indoors. Last winter, I spent basically the whole winter going sim golfing as much as possible and paying more than real golf to go do it, uh, which it's worth it rather than sitting in your house all winter. So uh, it's great, but I spent a lot of money doing that, and I figured I could get a lot more golfing and probably make this worthwhile doing it uh, at my own house. So I'll kind of show you around. Um, with the items I'm using and why they were chosen. So uh, first off, this is a three bay garage. I've got my pickup in here. Uh, normally with my wife's cars here, it's out for the video. Um, and then the third bay, we moved a bunch of kids stuff elsewhere and made room because this takes up basically all the third bay. Um, if you went a little shallower or had a, a hitting mat that was removable, which this one theoretically you could move easily enough. Um, then you could park a third vehicle there or other things. You can see I still have a lawnmower over there and whatnot. Um, but we've brought a bunch of stuff elsewhere to uh, make room for this. So thanks, wife. Um, anyways, I'm just a little sitting area back here. This is a cheap Amazon table with some marketplace stools that I found. Um, over here we've got the Unicor iMini. So this is called a launch monitor. And this is what's used to detect the hit. So when you're hitting the ball, this figures out how fast you hit it, how high you hit it, what angle, what spin was on it, and it reads it and it does a bunch of fancy math algorithm stuff and makes it, uh, computes it into a shot that you then see on the screen. Um, so this is a, what you'd probably call a middle of the road one. It's not the most basic and it's certainly not the most expensive. It's made by a company called Unicor. And um, I was turned on to them at a local simulator who has their overhead unit, which is ideally what I would have had. It, norm it just normally just mounts up either in front of or behind your projector. And <clears throat> then you don't have anything on the floor. You can use right and left hand hitters. Um, and it's a much cleaner look and uh, much nicer to have. But those are roughly two and a half or three times the price of this one and budget was a big concern for this setup. So um, this one was, they were used to be 4,500. Now they're 3,500 on sale. Um, I don't know if they're still on sale or not, but I actually bought a used different, similar style, um, a Bushnell Launch Pro, and I actually ended up selling that before I ever used it because I, uh, I knew I liked the Unicore and some of the features they have in their software. So I ended up going that route and I'm, mostly happy. Um, we'll get into a little bit more of that here shortly. Um, the next thing you'll see here is this is the hitting mat. So this is a uh, provided by Carl's place and I shouldn't say provided. Nothing here was sponsored. I know that's a relatively common thing and I'm, I'm fortunate enough in my racing to be sponsored in many aspects. Uh, but this was, none of this is sponsored, so it's all unbiased. Um, and I do give my honest opinions on spots, sponsored stuff anyways, but, um, so this is a Carl's Place hitting mat. It is uh, less expensive than many of the options, um, and it seems okay to me. Uh, and the reason I say okay, the mat itself is nice. It's an inch and three quarter thick. It's very spongy, and it feels it feels like soft turf or soft uh, grass that's you know plush that you'd be walking on going down a fairway. And uh, that part's nice. The hitting strip here is replaceable. And the reason that I don't love it is because I've already had to replace it once and it was only maybe two weeks before it broke. This is called their divot action strip. And uh, there's a plastic backing with foam on the bottom of it and the plastic backing broke, um, like I said, only after a couple weeks. They did replace it for free, which is great. And this is in here now. So hopefully this one lasts a little bit longer, but I'm not... I'm not sold that it's going to, so um, that may be something that needs to get replaced. Um, it originally came with this unit, which may be going back in. I do find that the divot action is less uh, painful, less 
less possible to cause injury on your joints, um, which is partially why I liked it. And it's more forgiving, which um, if you're a golfer, if you hit a fat shot, meaning you hit the, the ground behind the ball, this is more forgiving than this other one which makes you feel like a better player. So, <laughs> so that's part of the reason it's there. Um, Cause fat shots are very common. Ask any of my friends, ask anyone who golfs actually <laughs> fat shots are part of the deal. And uh, it's really frustrating when you're trying to score well, but anyway, um, up next here is the projector. So to project the image on the screen, obviously you need a projector. There's a million different options. Um, this one is called an Optima UHD 35 STX. And it wasn't the first projector I bought. The first one I bought was their non 4k unit. That was a laser projector and it was cheaper than this. Um, I installed it and I hated it. Uh, it put out a image that looked in my opinion, quite terrible. Like, uh, the, the lettering just did not look good. And, um, forgive me. Normally we don't have the lights up this high when I'm showing this image or when we're golfing here. Um, so it is definitely more vibrant with those lights off, which I'll show you here in a little bit. But anyway, I ended up returning that, uh, that projector because it just didn't suit my needs at all. It was, uh, basically blurry. Like even the text on the screen looked blurry in my opinion, and uh, I could never get it focused properly or any of the settings to make it better. So ended up with this one and it's far better. It's a 4k, but it is a lamp unit instead of laser. Um, but it still is 3,600 lumens. So for, for my needs, it works. Um, we're using a 4-3 aspect ratio here, and it fits perfectly. So for that, I'm happy. Um, but the color is definitely not as vibrant, and it's not near as uh, sharp as the high-end units that I've seen. And that's obviously, I mean, that's what you get with uh, when you pay a third the price of the high-end model that I'd love to own someday. But uh, it's still working great for us, and uh, in our budget... I'm happy with it. So next thing, that's just a generic Amazon spotlight. You don't need it, but when the lights are dimmed or off over here, it's nice just to know where to put the ball. It kind of just shines uh, in that little hitting zone there. Up next, we've got a very nice computer, which uh, I'm not going to get into any specs. I stole this from my racing simulator and uh, got it over here, but originally this was purchased during the worst time in history to buy a computer uh, because I was planning to mine with it to get my money back. And then the next day after I bought it, I think, I think cryptocurrency took a dump. So now I've got a really expensive computer that works great for this, uh, but it's probably worth, I don't know, a third of what it, what I paid for it then. Um, but here we are. And, uh, Chalk that one up to my wife. You know, I talked my wife into why it was a great idea. And then the next day it wasn't a great idea. So, oh, well, she still married me and she knows what she's up for. So, um, over here is just a reused TV from downstairs. That's just for football games or whatever we want to watch on TV. It's nice for people who are hanging out and golfing and waiting their turn. And then over here, I had just a basic monitor and it was pretty small, just a computer monitor. So I ended up looking around and I found this, which is a 4k 55 inch Samsung for 299 at Best Buy. And I couldn't believe it. Uh, I've been out of the TV game for a while, I guess. And I didn't realize how cheap they were, but I'm so impressed, uh, for $299 that you can get a TV like this. And the 4k image is so much better. I also something else I've been sleeping on in my old age. I don't really care much about technology anymore, but when you do upgrade, it's like, Oh, I guess, I guess things are still moving. <laughs> So anyway, I've been really happy with it. Uh, we've got it on just a little uh, TV stand um, unit. I don't remember if I bought this myself or through, I got some of this stuff through a, a company called Launch House Golf. I believe they're out of Oregon. Uh, great guys to deal with. And uh, I got all my Carl's Place stuff through them. So the mat and the hitting screen. Um, so next up then would be the hitting screen. So when you get a golf simulator you can't just hit into any old screen uh it's you're gonna poke holes through it and it's not gonna last so um it needs to be a dedicated golf screen and that's exactly what this is this is the carl's place premium screen with their diy enclosure and this is nine feet wide sorry nine feet tall 12 feet wide in a four three aspect ratio if i was to do it over again and when this screen wears out i probably will 
to try and upgrade. Um, I'm now regretting that I didn't go the full 10 feet. I've got 10 foot four inch ceilings. I wish I had done that and then bumped it out to 13 and a half feet or whatever the correct aspect ratio then is for the width. I wish I would have done that. It would have been a little bit more immersive. Um, although we're not, not short on space, but we're not exactly, I don't know. We don't have a ton of room. Um, this area over here is 23 feet from the wall to the wall. And our hitting area is only seven feet away from the screen, which is less than typical. I think it's seven and a half feet. That's less than most. Um, but for this type of launch monitor, it's completely fine. Um, normally you'd be a little bit further back, but uh, one nice thing about this, it had the shortest uh, throw ratio. They're called a short throw projector and it sits basically right over the top of the hitting area. So unless you're the, you've got the craziest swing in the world, you would never uh, hit the projector with your club. So, and that's another thing to consider. Most people say you want at least 10 foot ceilings and I would agree with that. Um, nine, I think nine foot ceilings, you'd feel really cramped and you'd be worried about hitting your driver and people with nine foot ceilings will just usually often not hit driver, but that's one of my most sporadic clubs and it's one I need the most help on. So I am very happy to have got 10 foot ceilings out here so that we don't have to worry about it. So anyway, uh, the screen itself is just okay in my opinion. Um, and the reason I say that is it's kind of wavy and I've tried a bunch of stuff to get the waves out of it and it nothing I can do uh, so far has really seemed to help. So I'm not going to give a negative review on it yet because I do still need to call Carl's and ask them if there's anything else I should be trying. Um, this is their new C-Series screen and uh, instead of having a bottom padding section like the old ones, it now just has a cable that runs through the bottom of the screen and you can see a little gap there. And this could very well be a uh, user slash installation error that um, maybe I didn't do something right, but um, it doesn't bounce back much, which is nice. Um, that's a concern with some screens that you get a bunch of bounce back and the ball wants to come rocketing back into your crew of people or into your own face. So that's nice, um, but it also just doesn't, it's not as taut as I'd like it to be. So. But uh, it went together nicely, and it all fit. It's all just a, a do-it-yourself deal, and uh, just takes a couple hours by yourself, and you have a screen up, and that's really neat. And for the money, I think it's probably one of the better ones. Their website was, in my opinion, probably the best, and it looks the most commercialized for uh, for this, uh, from what I saw for the golf industry. So it, it seemed like the most legitimate. So uh, that's kind of why I went with it. Uh, and then I kind of struggled with the landing surface uh, area, but ended up with just, this is just some stuff from uh, Home Depot. I believe it's 14 or 15 feet wide. I cut it down. It's 15 feet wide and I cut it down. Um, and then, yeah, it's just, it's really nice and plush. Um, so the ball doesn't hardly roll at all on it, which is nice when you're trying to prevent uh, bounce back um, or to prevent balls rolling all over the place. So that was good. Um, then the next thing too is I've got just some gym mat underneath that to give it um, not only to line up with the hitting mat itself, but to give it a little more cushion uh, for the ball's landing. So um, overall, I'm really happy with that. Um, and really the whole setup I'm pretty happy with. Um, just a few things I would upgrade if I had the money, like the projector and the screen itself. Um, I, hopefully I can improve that uh, with a little more fiddling. So the last thing that we'll talk about here is software. So this is called GS Pro. This is more or less considered the best software for sim golf. And I've golfed on a bunch of other softwares. And in my opinion, it absolutely is. It's the most realistic. They've got a million courses. You pay a subscription fee. It's 250 bucks a year. Um, pretty much all this golf stuff seems to be getting into subscriptions, which is a fantastic business model, by the way. Uh, I wish I was charging somebody subscriptions for something because it's just constant flow of money. But uh, anyway, it uh, to me is well worth it because it's uh, it's really the best. So, uh, And part of what makes it the best is this view software, which I'll show you uh, briefly here. Uh, one thing that's really neat, um, and I should have probably planned this ahead. I will probably cut to this here momentarily, but um, it shows you a lot of great data from when you're hitting the ball. 
but it also shows you a camera right here of a slow motion impact of the club coming through and hitting the ball. It's very cool. I'll maybe shoot some B-roll of that to either dub in right here or just show you here in a little bit. And then the other thing is, oh, there I am. Uh, the other thing is these. So currently, I don't have any nice swing cameras. These are just some cheap, uh, we'll call them eBay style cameras. But, uh, oh man, you can see what I'm wearing too. Anyway, uh, <laughs> this is very nice. Uh, and maybe I should turn on my light. Uh, way, the way I have this set up, these are called sp spinel or spinel cameras. Um, and the way I have them set up is to uh, reduce the exposure as much as possible so uh, that I can get the frame rate up but then everything gets really dark. So I installed this high bay light, which right there I just turned on. And now you can see things very clearly. So I have one camera mounted right here, just on my stand here for the setup. And that's my face on camera. So that's right there. And then I've got one down the line that I mounted on this little guy, which is one of my early attempts at a light. Um, and I just put the camera right here. And then that's just on a tripod, which I can move because normally I'm not, I'm not taking uh, swing cameras. That's usually just when I'm working on my swing, but anyway, so I've been really happy with that. That's awesome for game development, which is really what this whole thing is about. Besides all the fun of continuing to play golf all year with your friends, it's the hitting, uh, or it's the working on your game that, uh, for me is so exciting. Sorry. I'm just shut off that light and I know I didn't take good video but so yeah being able to work on your game is huge and uh that is a huge motivation for me in golf is uh this season I set out to break 80 for the first time and I didn't get there and uh, I went golfing as much as I humanly could and I didn't get there I was close several times I shot at 81 and 82 a bunch of near a or near 79s with a few little cheats, which I'm never going to count. Um, I mean, I do sometimes, but it, I, I need a legitimate 79 to feel fulfilled. But anyway, uh, so I guess that's moving on to next year. Um, although I am playing really good sim golf right now, I joined a league and I'm having a lot of fun and playing well. So uh, the last thing here is a caution. If you do buy this uh, wall stuff, this sound editing material, don't get the cheap stuff on, on Amazon, which is exactly what I have. <laughs> it's you get what you pay for usually and this is no exception it's uh it's on there but it looks kind of crummy and it's not good quality <laughs> but anyway it's it's better than the ugly wall that was behind it and it does reduce some of the the noise out here so and that's one last thing i'll talk about here is noise um with a simulator you're hitting uh, balls as hard as you can at times and it can be noisy so Doing a garage setup like this is nice for us because my kids' bedrooms are way on the other end of the house and uh, it's not really a concern for noise. So, Whereas if this was inside the house, it would be much more difficult to keep the noise down and so that they could be sleeping while I'm out here whacking balls. So, Anyway, that's it. I'll probably have my wife come out here and take a video of me hitting a few absolutely cold balls, meaning I haven't warmed up at all. We're at Payne's Valley. I'll try to put a few out there just so you can see it in action. And uh, we'll end with that. Tiffany is recording me. I'm going to hit a few shots. I haven't hit a single shot. I haven't warmed up at all. This isn't a good idea, especially when I'm trying to show off for all of you millions of viewers. Um, but we're at Payne's Valley. This is a short 116 yard shot. I'm going to take a nine iron because I haven't swung yet. And I'm just going to take it easy. Um, I've been playing more of a draw lately, so we'll see if that's true. Oh, this is bad. Anyway, uh, you just set the ball into the area, which right now I've taken it out. You'll hear the beep once you set it in. Launch monitor picks it up, says, hey, the ball's in the zone. It shows you where in the zone it is. And it says, I'm ready to hit. Take one more practice swing. We'll try and put one out there. I pulled the crap out of it. So you can see how accurate it is. I thinned it and I pulled it. And no draw. And oh, it's drawing too much. And yeah, it's way too far. Let 
me remind everyone, golf is hard. There, that one's draw. First shot, right here. Hey, a little deep, but it's gonna work. Nope. <laughs> All right, come over here. Did that go in the water? Yes, well, I thought so. Anyway, here's one of the cool features. Um, this is what I was telling you about. So you can see a slow-mo video. That helps if I had a little more light on it right now. But you can stop and uh, show the club coming to impact. So you can see I thinned this one a little bit. My club's not even quite on the ground. So it's a little thin, but then you can look over here. You can see your angle of attack, your club path angle. Um, and then the spin numbers, distance, club speed, ball speed, all that. And then you can see all kinds of other information. Here's our swing cameras, which let me show you one of those. You're off. So you can see both angles and I can slow down and go frame by frame to really look at uh, what you're doing right or wrong. Pretty neat. Probably the sandals. Yeah, no, those are my spiked sandals. Just kidding. Uh, you can see my body's probably a little too forward and I'm flipping a little bit and a uh, number of things, but this isn't, I'm gonna give myself a little break here. This isn't my normal, normal swing because I'm not even warmed up yet. But anyway, uh, that's a really cool feature. Um, eventually I'd like to get some better cameras too, but anyway. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you are also addicted to golf and you should come golf with me sometime. And one more thing, uh, smash buttons. Love you. Bye.